Generating digital elevation models with Sentinel-1 data is a challenging task because the mission was not primarily designed for this. The narrow orbital tube provides excellent conditions for differential interferometry, but not all image pairs can be turned into DEMs. Furthermore, the repeat cycle of 6 or even 12 days can result in temporal decorrelation over many surfaces, especially in combination with the wavelength of Sentinel-1's C-band. The truth is, because most parts of the Earth are covered by vegetation, the quality of Sentinel-1 DEMs cannot compete with openly available DEMs, such as SRTM, Arlos World 3D or the Copernicus DEM, which are all openly available at a spatial resolution of 30 meters. Yet, the large volume of archived Sentinel-1 data brings enormous potential for this. The main challenge for users is to find the most suitable image pairs based on temporal baseline, perpendicular baseline, weather conditions and look direction. The landscapes around the city of Erzincan in central Turkey have been selected to test the impact of different parameters on the EM generation in this study. Furthermore, a literature review has been conducted. This figure shows the decrease of coherence for Sentinel-1 image pairs of increasing temporal baseline. The rapid decorrelation over most surfaces leads to phase noise and less pronounced fringes. Noisy interferograms produce inaccurate DEMs. These box plots show the decrease of coherence for various surface types. While it remains comparably high over urban and bare areas, vegetated areas suffer from rapid loss of coherence within short time. While the effect of temporal decorrelation is widely understood, the impact of the perpendicular baseline is widely neglected in many Sentinel-1 studies. An ideal perpendicular baseline of above 150 meters is recommended for DEM generation. However, most Sentinel-1 image pairs have perpendicular baselines below 50 meters. This leads to a small height ambiguity and less pronounced fringes. As shown in the second figure, higher perpendicular baselines lead to more fringes and thus more accurate height estimates. This figure shows how the amount of fringes decreases with shorter perpendicular baselines. As a consequence, the quality of the resulting DEMs decreases as shown in this hill shade representation. But also topography itself is prone to different error sources. The profile cross-section in the top left shows the heights of Sentinel-1 compared to those of SRTM. While the lowlands are systematically overestimated, the tops of the mountains were underestimated. This can be caused by imprecise unwrapping in extreme terrains. The figure on the top right shows that the majority of height errors occurs at slopes above 40 degrees. The figures at the bottom demonstrate how especially small and large local incidence angles lead to higher errors, as well as areas with low coherence. A systematic literature review was conducted to evaluate current studies which deal with the derivation of ground or surface heights from Sentinel-1 interferometry. Of all evaluated studies, 12 created DEMs with single image pairs and 9 used products of multiple dates. Only half of the studies mentioned the selection of images based on the suitability of their perpendicular baseline. The ESA Snap Toolbox was the most frequently used software, but also commercial packages such as Erdas or MATLAB were used. Validation was performed by either ground control points or reference DEMs. Five studies did not mention their reference data at all. While most studies performed statistical accuracy assessments, visual interpretation of the results has also been performed. The most frequent source of error was temporal decorrelation over vegetated areas, but also images with small perpendicular baselines led to bad results. To get more insights from the user perspective, over 100 topics on DEM generation in the SNAP user forum have been evaluated. The most frequent topics dealt with the correct handling of the software, the development of new methods, the selection of suitable image pairs and the process of phase unwrapping. The main reasons for unsatisfying results were phase decorrelation over vegetated areas, technical difficulties, but also exaggerated expectations on the quality of the resulting DEMs, often triggered by supervisors which gave their students unsolvable tasks. To conclude, Sentinel-1 can deliver high-quality DEMs, but only if the minimum baseline conditions are met 
and error sources are handled correctly. Many of the failed attempts could have been avoided with a more profound knowledge on the various aspects of DEM generation. Accordingly, awareness of error sources and a transparent communication of methods are crucial. These findings have been summarized in a review paper in the Open Geosciences Journal. Thank you for your interest.